readings from Washington. I'm uh, joined by my colleague, Dr. Maura Lauritsen, who is uh, an external evaluator and an internal evaluator that works on the programs that I work with. And we wanted to talk a little bit today about validity and reliability, differences between the two and some of the components between the two. So validity, we're looking at how valid something is, reliability, does it do the same thing over and over again? The best example I ever heard was the example of getting on a scale and a reliable scale gives you always the same number or very close to the same number, whereas an accurate scale or a valid scale actually gives you the correct number. So <laughs> ideally, you would like to have both. Right. Right. Unless you're like me, then you maybe you want to have a, a well, non-reliable scale. A reliable, scale. not accurate scale. <laughs> so, <laughs> not valid scale. Which is reliable, I guess. All right. So when I think of validity, I think of two things. I think of external validity first. And that's the generalizability, how something mm -hmm. can apply to other situations. And then, on the other hand, you have the internal validity. And that's, that's really looking at the cause and effect of something internally. So if you have some sort of tool that you're measuring, mm -hmm. You want to know, does it do what you say it's supposed to do? Well, it, absolutely. And if one part of the instrument is, is measuring something, does the, does the rest of the instrument support it? So it's really an issue of within the instrument and within the testing, are you getting valid results? Okay. So three major types of validity. First is the criterion validity. And does it match a standard? What is the criteria you're trying to relate something to? And does it match to that standard. Absolutely. And you know, there's two ways to think of it. Is there concurrent validity, criterion validity, and that's a measurement against the benchmark. And then the predictive validity, um, does the measure predict something that happens Absolutely. in the future? Accurately, of course. Accurately. Right. Yeah. And then we have content validity, and that's does uh, the um, does the instrument or the tool match the target content uniformly. Absolutely. So um, if, you, if you're trying to measure something, are the items representative of that entire realm of content? And then um, let me think about construct validity. Does it measure the construct? And I think that's one, that one's a little more complicated. That one's much more complicated. And I think this is typically the hardest thing to actually assess reliably or to measure reliably yourself is whether or not you have a good construct validity. Because that's really an issue of are the, are the items, for instance, on a survey actually measuring the quality that you're trying to get to. And one of the hardest things if you look at examples is in psychology, for instance, if you look at the issue of self-esteem. This is a good thing, good example here because it's very difficult to measure self-esteem. And so your question becomes, are the questions on your tool actually measuring self-esteem or theoretically measuring something else that you don't know about? Right. So, I mean, and really there's no absolute way to measure Absolutely. something. You don't prove anything. We're really trying to demonstrate if something is, in fact, supported. Correct. So um, there's two types of construct validity. You have the convergent validity, and that's wondering if similar tools are measuring the same construct in a similar way. So if, if you're measuring self-efficacy self or self-esteem, does your self-esteem instrument measure the same thing my self-esteem instrument measures, and do we get similar scores with, with different populations, for mm -hmm. example? Mm -hmm. And then you can have discriminant validity, and that's to say, is self-esteem different than something else. Something else. Absolutely. Like intelligence or whatever the other. And, and does it actually, when you're looking at the results, you're seeing that it really seems to show self-esteem instead of intelligence. Exactly. And whatever items that you might have that measure intelligence, are they really seeming to show that? Yeah. Right? So that's a good way to think about validity. I'm going to look at a separate concept, although totally integrated, and that's reliability. Does it do the same thing over and over and over again? The first form of reliability you want to think about is internal consistency. So if you have items, does a, a person or different people score in a similar fashion? Absolutely. So uh, and that's kind of tricky in the sense that if, if I answer low on something and high on other things, do other people like me measure low on something and high on those other items at the same time? And then, next part of reliability is if you take it and then you take it again, mm -hmm. do you get similar results? Because if your results are different, 
That's certainly not reliable. Time over time, you want to use Absolutely. the same thing mm -hmm. and have that. And there are other ways to measure reliability. You can measure split halves. If you take one reading of an instrument and you split it up into pieces, does it still do the same thing? And, and sometimes you have different versions of instruments mm -hmm. and, and do the alternate forms consistently measure the same, same thing. Same thing, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. It's a, t it's a tough construct, a tough idea, I think, for any of us to get our hands around right. and really understand what it is we're talking about when you play it out in the real world and what does it actually mean, what does it look like. Right. And so when we, when we think about constructs and we want to relate them to theory, we want to make sure that we're measuring in reliable and valid ways. To the if, best of our ability. Yeah. Absolutely. So we could have an extremely reliable instrument and if someone looks at it from the start and says, well, I don't think it's valid. Mm -hmm. In other words, they reject it on its face. That's sometimes called face validity. Mm -hmm. Then, even if the instrument is, in fact, reliable, if the initial supposition that the instrument is not measuring a construct, a valid construct, doesn't have that face validity, then someone might not perceive the tool to be doing what it's supposed to Absolutely. be doing. So, um, when you're looking for construct validity, very important. It's very important to rigorously Make sure you're connecting your ideas together. Absolutely, absolutely. So anyway, this has been a little bit on construct validity and reliability, measuring the two, and looking at how they can be used in instruments. Thanks for your time, Laura. Absolutely. Thank you, Frank.